So to make sure that the uh, artifacts that I demonstrated in my last video weren't in fact just simple converter artifacts and that I wasn't being overly demanding about the uh, dynamic range of ex expectations um, in this circuit, I set up a quick dynamic range check of the board. What I did was uh, monitor the output and, on the scope and picked off the input signal at the uh, wiper of the clean channel, uh, which is pretty close to a direct, input, uh, direct connection to the input of the board. It goes through an additional resistor, which is going to uh, set up a voltage divider against the uh, input impedance of the board, but um, it's not going to affect our dynamic range measurement. What I got was about 1.8 millivolts being the point where the circuit started generating all that low frequency grunge. And I was able to drive the board with about 3.3 .3 volts uh, before there was any visual um, indication of saturation. These are zero to peak values. So if we grind through the math, we get a uh, dynamic range of about 65 dB. Now that is nowhere near the codex rated 100 dB, both for the A to D and the D to A conversion. Now no doubt those figures are um, weighted, uh, but even accounting for weighting and um, a round trip through the converters, that's not going to be anywhere close to 65 dB. So I don't think I'm being overly demanding about the circuit. Now, where does that leave us? Um, it might be possible to reap some um, subjective benefits just by driving the signal into the uh, board a little harder uh, in order to maybe make use of that 65 dB range in a more effective way. Um, I don't know if that's going to work when you're actually writing hot signals into the amp. So um, some more thinking to be done here.